Hi, welcome back. In this video, I want to put together the use of polynomial division in finding the zeros of a polynomial. So suppose we are given the polynomial p of x equals 4x to the fourth minus 28x to the third plus 61x squared minus 42x plus 9. And we are told that c equals 1 half is a zero of multiplicity 2. And we are asked to write the polynomial in factored form. Now this is another way of saying find all the zeros of this polynomial because if we can find all the zeros then we can write the polynomial in factor form because each zero will correspond to a factor. So what are we going to do here? Well, we know that x minus one half is a zero means that x, or sorry, c equals one half is a zero means that x minus one half is a factor. And in fact, so we know that that will multiply in or divide into our polynomial and result in a remainder of zero. And in fact, we know that we can divide this in twice because of the multiplicity of two. So we are going to find something else that goes in those parentheses, and when that's all multiplied together, that will be 4x to the 4th minus 28x to the 3rd plus 61x squared minus 42x plus 9. Now keep in mind, when we are finding zeros, what we are really doing is solving this equation that 4x to the 4th minus 28x to the 3rd plus 61x squared minus 42x plus 9 equals 0. So I need to find what goes in this set of parentheses. And I'm going to do that by dividing x minus 1 half into this polynomial twice. And it is twice because, remember, we know that this zero has a multiplicity of two. If that multiplicity were three, then we would divide in three times. If that multiplicity were one, we would only be able to divide in once. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to use synthetic division. I've got a x minus a one-half, so I put the one-half in a box. And next to that box, I write the coefficients of my polynomial. So I've got 4x to the fourth minus 28x to the third plus 61x squared minus 42x plus 9. I draw a horizontal line, and I drop down the first coefficient. Now, I multiply 1 half times 4 to get 2, and I add that to negative 28, so I get negative 26. 1 half times negative 26 is negative 13, and I add that to 61. And I need to borrow 11 minus 3 is 8. 5 minus 1 is 4, so I get 48. 1 half times 48 
is 24. Negative 42 plus 24 is negative 18. 1 half times negative 18 is negative 9. That gives me a remainder of 0. So now I know that my polynomial could be rewritten as x minus 1 half times 4x to the third minus 26x squared plus 48 x minus 18. But I also know that I can divide 1 half in one more time. So I'm going to divide 1 half into this cubic, this third degree polynomial that I've got. So I'm going to drop down the, bring down the 4. 1 half times 4 is 2. Negative 26 plus 2 is negative 24. 1 half times negative 24 is negative 12. 48 minus 12 is 36. 1 half times 36 is 18, which gives me a remainder of 0. So now what do I know? Well, now I know that my polynomial is x minus 1 half times x minus 1 half times 4x squared minus 24x plus 36. Okay, looking just at that last term, or that last factor, this 4x squared minus 24x plus 36, all of those coefficients are divisible by 4. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times x minus 1 half times x minus 1 half times x squared minus 4x plus 9. No, sorry. Minus 6x. 24 divided by 4 is 6. Now that quadratic factors, that actually is x minus 3 squared. So this polynomial is 4 times x minus 1 half squared times x minus 3 squared because x minus 3 squared is the factored form of x squared minus 6x plus 9. You can verify that by foiling. So this is the factored form of my polynomial. And I know that 1 half is a 0 of multiplicity 2. That one was given to me. And 3 is a 0 of multiplicity 2. Okay, so that is really the primary work that we are doing with all of this polynomial division, is getting from expanded form to factored form. Now we can also turn this around and go backwards. So let's suppose we are asked to write a polynomial that has zeros, negative 2, 2, and, well, negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2, 
and a leading coefficient of 117. And we can leave this in factor form. So the zeros tell us something. The zeros tell me that my factors are x minus negative 2 or x plus 2, x minus negative 1, so x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 2. So my polynomial is going to be something times x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Now how do I figure out the something? Well, remember when I first started talking with you about polynomials, we talked about that if I just multiply all of these things together, my leading coefficient would come from the 1 times the 1 times the 1 times the 1, which is just 1. I need a leading coefficient of 117. That's what goes out in front. So my polynomial would be 117 times x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Okay, let's try another one. This one's a little more complicated. This one, this time I am told that the solutions to the equation p of x equals 0 are x equals positive and negative 3 and x equals 6. I am told the leading coefficient is 7, and I am told that the point negative 3, 0 is a local minimum. On the graph. of my polynomial. Okay. Well, I know that the solutions to this equation are zeros. So I know that I have zeros at negative 3, 3, and 6, which means that I know that I have factors of x minus negative 3, x minus 3, and x minus 6. But this statement is a little bit problematic because remember what that means. And that means that if I were to sketch this thing, So I know I've got a 0 here at negative 3, 0, and a 0 at 3, 0, and a 0 at 6. But I'm told that this function, that this thing must do this because that's a 0, and then it does something else, and then it got, has to pass through this, and, and then it has to pass through this guy. Oh, I remember this. 
So when we first talked about multiplicity, we said that the graph would resemble. So if I've got something that looks like a parabola in the vicinity of this zero, that means that this zero has to have a multiplicity of an even multiplicity. Now, we're not going to make life harder than necessary, so we're going to pick the smallest even multiplicity. So that means that this must be a re that means that negative 3 must be a repeated 0. So negative 3 must have a multiplicity of 2, which means that, oh, okay. So my polynomial now is something times x plus 3 squared, so I get that turnaround, times x minus 3, times x minus 6. Now, the something out in front, that is my leading coefficient, which is 7. And this is my polynomial in factored form. All right, I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you again soon.